prologue. What makes people happy? It's a question that philosophers have wrestled with for ages, even as they pontificated their perspectives. Aristotle was actually considered the happiness philosopher. I'm not a philosopher per se, but I'm going to do two things. I'm going to share my thoughts on happiness related to user experience, particularly my specialty UX research. I'm also going to help us view this topic through the lens of a filmmaker. My name is Sean Baxter, but most people call me Baxter. I've been a UX practitioner for over 10 years. I'm also a filmmaker, having made films across a variety of genres for even longer. When people find out that I'm a filmmaker now practicing UX, they consistently ask two questions. Any guesses? Well, before I answer that, did you know that I can predict what's happening in your body right now? Silence fills the air. Suspense builds in. Your brain starts producing the neurotransmitter dopamine, causing you to focus and increase your interest in what I'm saying. This is typically the body's response when in suspense, it can't help itself. Behavioral science, it's a dark art that can be used for good or bad and design, be it UX or filmmaking, is a manipulation of these dark arts. So what are the two questions I typically get asked? It's the question that drives us. Well, I won't leave you in suspense. The two questions are, what films did you work on and how did you move from filmmaking to user experience? Some of you really want to know that answer, but my friends, that's a topic for another day. If you're really disappointed in that response, then your body produced a stress hormone, cortisol. It's pumping in your bloodstream now, maybe even the adrenaline of anger is building. Your muscles are tensing up. Even my description is adding to your response, even as I speak slower at a lower register. Manipulation. But then I pause and smile and you hear it in my voice as it rises. I say something lighthearted, witty or funny, like a joke. What did the police officer say to the mime when he arrested him? You have the right to remain silent. You either laughed or groaned or even finished the line. The joke was kind of obvious. There's a neural coupling happening between us. It's creating affinity, moving us away from enemies to words, allies, friends. And your tense muscles relax. Those stress hormones dissipate. Again, manipulation. This is the art of filmmaking, and this is also UX. They're both design. Great thing about these two disciplines is that story is at the center. A character presented in a visual story or a persona going through a customer journey. They are both representations of the real life we all live in some form or fashion with its highs and lows, ups and downs, mountains and valleys, unexpected turns that bring us misery or delight all design, all stories of us. Design can be many things, creative communication, introspective expressionism, or problem solving. Faced with a problem, need a solution, design it, figure it out. You might ask, how do you figure it out? Or perhaps a more interesting question, why do you figure it out? It's the question that drives us. When we first start our careers, our journey into design, we're often called to approach problems with childlike wonder, to think beyond the possible and bring the impossible into reality. This could be a mobile app, a curated space, systems, and yes, even films. Have you ever tried to make a film? This could be a corporate video, vlog, commercial, music video, short narrative, documentary, or feature. You will face challenge after challenge, obstacle after obstacle. You will paint yourself into a corner and then have to magically figure your way out before time runs out. The same with an app, curated space, or a system. Let's look at design, but not as you undoubtedly perceived it up until this point, 
but through the lens of filmmakers, the actor, the writer, the director. Act one, the actor, the personification, the tour guide, the embodiment of dreams. All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players, Shakespeare. Actors typically do two things. They manifest the characters they play and they authentically react to their environment. Whether you're a student of the great acting teachers, Adler, Meisner, Kazan, or Strasberg, who by all counts stem their teachings from Konstantin Stanislavski, they all have this in common, realism, authenticity, the method, or a lot about what method acting is, is not acting at all. It's about stripping away the concept of acting and becoming the person of that character, tapping into their neuroses, quirks, and weirdness. It's all about the way they perceive their world, their situation, their environment. This is their mental model. Sound familiar? In user experience design, we talk about mapping a persona, a person, their mental model. Again, how they perceive the world. As an actor, you do the same thing, you, you become. When an actor prepares for a new role, they often do ethnographic research. They watch and observe people. They gain a deep understanding of how they think, how they function and how they become. This is different from how we typically think about doing ethnographic research. When we do it, we attempt to garner empathy for the end user, the people that we're designing for their pain points, their challenges, and we gain, and as we gain that empathy, we, we look to share it with our team and, and that's okay, but perhaps there's a better way, the way of the actor becoming. Not just the pain points we observed, but that torment expressed, profoundly feeling that frustration with a desperation for a way out, a pursuit of happiness. We often talk about creating personas with a set of demographics and psychographics that are all too formulaic characterizations of a real person, a real person. This would be considered bad acting, not a show you'd pay for. We shouldn't approach our work as designer so scientifically. Where's that raw emotion, that rage about a terrible experience? We shouldn't just present a two-dimensional figure. We should express all that complexity of the tones of humanity, vulnerability, fear, risk, joy, tranquility, and satisfaction. We could take Meisner's teaching where he says, as actors, we behave truthfully in an imaginary situation. After all, you haven't designed the new product, service, or experience yet. Hopefully, the next time you write a user story, you go beyond the academically writing, the, the Mad Lib style as a insert user, I need to insert action so that I can insert benefit. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but there's more. We can dig deeper and the benefits are an authentic solution to a real problem for a real person, not just a product. Is your understanding of your customers this complete, this passionate, this genuine? I implore you to use your five or six senses to embody the real customer. Become an actor. Act two, the writer, the crafter of stories, the idea maker, the entrepreneur, the conjurer of dreams. They're the ones that ask for the emotional investment from the actor and the audience. In some cases, they ask you to suspend disbelief and go on a magical journey with them. They take you through a beginning, middle, end to motivate you to contemplate, perhaps even challenge your humanity, your reality, your state of being, your limitations, and for a moment, be free, free of constraints. But this isn't about creating fr friction, fiction, it's about telling honest stories, the ones that resonate with the tragic character that desperately wants to be saved from his situation, their situation. Stories are universal. They make us human. They change us like dopamine. They give us focus, clarity. 
They help us find the rhythm of life. They take that childlike wonder, meet an inciting incident and go on a journey that makes the destination worthwhile. We think we've done something when customers reject our initial often offerings and then pivot. But life, the journey, it, it's about conflict, change, challenges, confrontation, and the climax. All of those small decisions accumulated into one simple focused idea. That one driving goal that drives the character wrestling with their inner demons, those tensions as they plot twist their way to the final destination. Does your app do that? Your space, your system? Because when you do that, you have something extraordinary. You give your character that godlike moment where, where they feel invincible. You don't just gain a customer. You, you create a fan, an evangelist, who will promote their satisfaction with your offering wherever they go. Do you realize how powerful that is? It's unlimited. Act three, the director, the visionary, the head of UX, the interpreter of dreams. They take the whole and break it down into each moment, each breath, each beat of that customer experience. They visualize those moments of pain and transfigure it into joy by connecting us to the brand, the product, or perhaps just an idea. While satisfying the analytical story that executives care about, they use content, color, composition with consistency to paint a better existence. The director doesn't tell someone how to feel, they make them feel. They help you understand that you are trapped and need a way out before it's too late. For years, they're in the trenches, blooding their hands, doing arduous work from designing poorly conceived solution to those bright milestones of perfect opportunities. They find that meditative balance between art, science, and faith. They educate, exercise, enhance, and embrace all that design has to offer. They grow from failure and they toughen their skin through harsh criticism. They add and subtract until they see clearly communicate clearly. They tap into their subconscious, honing their instincts to choose best over good, naturally. They invest, involve, influence, and inspire the next generation of designers. <laughs> you might be thinking, my director of UX isn't anything like that. And you might be right, but somewhere deep inside, they aspire to be. At least at some point they did. You see, They've lived with the writer's script. They have an intimacy with the actor's preparation. And they want their audience to understand the control that they have, that they should have over the world and see how much better it can be. They go beyond customer engagement to customer intimacy. Epilogue. Why view design through this lens? Why take the time to solve problems? Why do I keep asking you questions? At the beginning of this presentation, I know some of you were lost, initially wondering, where's he going with all of this? The philosopher Jean-Baptiste Alphonse Carr said, the more things change, the more they stay the same. In this screen age that we live in, we can lose our humanity. I'm offering you a different lens to view the work we do. We need more unique voices in the work we do. Before becoming a user experience practitioner, you may have been a graphic artist or maybe even a chef, a sports coach, a dancer, an engineer, a math teacher, or perhaps a filmmaker. We need you, all of you. Please write your truth and give us a new understanding of our world. Discover who you are. Accept who you are. Help us see through your eyes, challenge and inspire us. Don't just mix methods, blend them and help us get somewhere new, somewhere authentic. After all, what is technology without the human touch? Help us find our humanity again. Help us stay human. 
I can't win everyone. I, I can't convince all of you. I'm not really supposed to. We need more voices. And now that we're at the end of our journey, our time together, I hope you have, have experienced a, a catharsis. I hope you feel inspired and happy. That would make me happy. Thank you. All right, uh, so, and uh, you prefer to be called Baxter, right? Yes, <laughs> I prefer Baxter. All right, so over to the Q&A. Um, few questions in there already, and a reminder, folks, to please uh, put questions in there. I'm seeing a lot of, uh, a, a lot of uh, very loud, aggressive, uh, positive uh, comments in, already in the chat. We'll be doing a, a round of thank yous shortly, but let's get into the Q&A. Uh, so I'm seeing two that both have uh, one vote each so far, because I think people were in such rapt attention. Uh, let's just do this first one. So uh, Uday says, it would be great if you could have all the questions. Oh, that's a, sorry. Uh, if you have cleared out, this is a quest, this is anything to me. I should have read it ahead of time, but I had was sharing my screen. Uh, presenter key. Yeah, it would be so. Uh, Uday is asking about who's clearing out the, the clearing out the questions thing. It lets us continue to have those. It is and it has the timestamps so we can tell when the questions went to who. Um, but uh, there's I, I don't know any straightforward way to, to facilitate letting everyone answer, letting all the presenters answer every question. So we're doing our best today under the under the circumstances of the time we have. Um, but if you are upset about it, we're happy to give you a refund. I'm, not, I'm probably not supposed to make that joke. I'm going to get in trouble. Okay, so um, <laughs> sorry. Back to the questions for, for Baxter. All right. Um, yes, yeah, so, okay. For the, for the people who may not have the kind of confidence that seems involved in this kind of passion, what would be your one most important piece of advice for those people? That's, yeah, that's a good question because, uh, you know, my background includes a lot of uh, theater and uh, comedy and, and so forth. Um, so I'm, I'm used to being in front of crowds and, and getting booze as well as uh, all the accolades there. So I appreciate that for everyone. But, you know, communication comes in a lot of different forms. So standing up in front of an audience and or presenting to a group of stakeholders uh, is one approach. But you can use visual communication. You can use storyboards, uh, for instance, uh, almost like cartoon um, boxes to tell a story. You could certainly write one. You could have other people either narrate or act something out if you wanted to, uh, if you think of what Donna was saying about personas. Um, and, and the main part of personas in, in terms of getting people together on the same page, well, crafting a story together and having different people lend their voices to it would be a way not only to get that collaboration and, and interactivity and, and which will create more investment in it, but it's just a way of, of looking at um, that story uh, from many different voices, many different perspectives. And when you take that approach, you don't really have to be at the center. You don't have to be the one standing in front. You could just be a simple facilitator by organizing that group to come together asking a few prompts and then let the discussion happen, record it and go and maybe even edit it and create like a 60 second sizzle reel that can then be circulated amongst your uh, team. So it's it's a lot of different, it's using all the forms of communication that we have. Awesome, that's great. Uh, and the next question I, we can pull up here, uh, how could you let other people know uh, like how can you let other people know, like you, a UX designer can be considered as a person who can create and arrange for the things easier and better with his strategies? Yeah, it's a challenge. Um, the way I'm interpreting that question, though, is that um, like most of us, you know, most companies have a very uh, stringent way of operating. Um, and, it's, and in a lot of ways, you have to when you think of a developer and, and writing code, one person does something a little bit different and everything falls apart. So um, since a lot of us work for engineering um, based or led firms, uh, that's always going to be a challenge. Uh, there are certainly other companies that are doing things different ways. If you go to a digital agency or an agency that's specifically about um, uh, providing uh, experience services, you, you may have a lot less of that. But 
I'm assuming I'm speaking to the majority where you work for a large corporation that's building a, a technological product. They have a lot of engineers and, and those engineers really take the lead in how things get done at that company. And then you come along and you're offering all of these crazy ideas and oh, let's dream and stuff. And they're like, stop it, please stop, you know, go away maybe, you know, never come back. It's, the range is, the full range is there. But, um, but what I would say is that you, you start with small experiments. It's, it's, if you go in there just trying to shout at anyone who will listen, then yeah, you, you may turn some people off and, and lose some form of that credibility. But if you go and again, you start finding people who just conversations, you know, uh, whether it's in, in um, just reaching out to someone at your company or if you're still able to go into the office, just talking to people and start finding people who are like-minded and then start sharing your vision. Like, I have an idea that if we were to craft the story or we were to do something like this to kind of really help uh, spotlight the, uh, the persona or the, or the particular user that we're designing for, um, I'd like to see if we can do something together, collaborate and, and, and start you know, socializing it amongst the company just to see how people will respond to it. And you may find out very quickly that that's just not the company that's really going to, to take that seriously. But what I think you may find is that as you continue to iterate and tweak that experiment, you'll start finding the right communication style with the right balance of visual and facts and story, uh, some imagination and, and people start resonating with it. And once you start finding the formula for that particular environment you're in, then you start building and building and making sure that enough people are hearing about it. And you know, I've had a success doing these types of experiments at my company and we start hearing from you know, VPs and, and, and the C-suite to start saying, I'm interested in, in more of what you guys are doing. I saw that, you know, little video you did. I thought that was interesting. I want to know more. And, and that, so that would be one approach uh, or set of approaches that I would recommend. That's great. Yeah. And, and it looks like Daniel was asking about uh, particular stories where you infuse the actor, writer, director mindset into a UX project. He, he also put in a thing saying that he kind of felt like you were sort of addressing that earlier, but if you have any other stories to share along those lines. Oh yeah, sure. Um, I know that with the, with the team that I lead, um, UX researchers, um, we're all doing, um, we're, we're, we have a decentralized model, so we're all with our different teams and we're, it's just so much work we're churning out for um, so many different people. So we ended up uh, discussing like, what's the best way to kind of communicate this once so that everyone knows about all of our different activities in kind of one central place. So I basically interviewed all the different team members and I wrote a script based on, on what they had to say and more like a documentary created a 10 or 12 minute documentary that I was able to share out with the executives. And, and it was a lot easier than us standing and reporting for one hour and showing a, a bunch of slides about what we worked on. So telling it in a more narrative style really resonated. Um, so use, you know, so basically straightforward storytelling, no, no, no acting, no, no characters were created for, for that presentation, but everyone's voice was included because they're all sharing their work and all highlighting the key pieces, but done in a way where they could sit down 12 minutes and, and have a quarter's worth of work across a really large organization. So that would be one, one story I, I'd share. Great. Fantastic. Well, I can tell a lot of people really appreciated your, your talk. Uh, maybe time for one more question if anyone has one in the Q&A, although I see, yeah, so people are, are continuing to, to say that they, they loved it, they're saying it was empowering, and they love to see a documentary like this. Uh, <laughs> so I think people are very pleased. So unless there are any yeah, other questions know, we might... Mm -hmm. One thing I, I'd say, though, is that, you know, I really wanted to talk to people, not just who maybe had a, a, a fine arts background, but also um, kind of like I mentioned in, in the talk, you could be a chef, you could be a, a dancer, you could be anything. There's so many backgrounds that when I talk to a lot of people who've entered this field and I ask where they've come from, you know, bankers and, and just different things, it's, it's whatever makes you, you, there's something in there that this discipline, this field would benefit from. So don't feel like you have to hide it away or sweep it under a rug, but you know, find a way to bring that uniqueness out. Um, and to what Richard had said uh, um, earlier, um, it's, it's, we need more competent voices, but in understanding and increasing your knowledge and your, 
your experience with user experience, uh, don't forget where you come from and, and find a way to bring that voice in as well. Great. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I, I get a question sometimes. Uh, I, I'm a magician, like a side hustle thing for me, right? I, yeah, you, you know. And uh, <laughs> I get a question sometimes about how that intersects with UX. And I struggle with that. But actually, I was reflecting on that while you were, were talking and, and uh, thinking about how they both have like an, like an invisible artifice thing. They both have a thing where you're creating an experience for people that's supposed mm -hmm. to be invisible. Um, yeah. Normally, all I can say about it is like they're the opposite, right? They're both about understanding what you expect, but in one case you give them the thing they expect, and in the other case you give them the opposite of that. So it's an interesting thing to to lead me to reflection too. That was great. So thanks so much, Baxter. I appreciate your uh, time today. All right. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it.